How to empty your mind? How to get rid of never-ending flow of thoughts? These are the questions spiritual practitioners are usually concerned of. The simple truth is that one can either maintain the flow of thoughts or the flow of chi, but never both at the same time. Now, what is the flow of chi and what is chi itself? This video is about to answer these questions and give some practical tips on how to master the flow of chi. On the left-hand side, you can see me performing robes out techniques. On the right hand side, same exact techniques are performed, but without involving an actual robe tar. Since chi is not material in its nature, it's impossible to define it. However, we can witness the reflection of chi. You may think of robe tar as an indicator of motion that occurs within my body. Similarly, body motion itself reflects the inner flow of chi. We don't have a direct access to our chi, but we can adjust body movements to harmonize it. Once the flow of chi is harmonized, your mind would automatically focus at its maintenance, so there would be no spare space for thoughts. This is the ultimate technology behind the living here and now principle. The most simple movement to sense is an external movement. For instance, if you're retaining a staff, since it's not part of you, you may clearly feel how it moves relatively to your body. You may then start not just rotating it, but doing certain techniques. These techniques are intended to involve the flow of chi within your body. If there is no flow, the stuff will stay still. If it moves, it means it's driven by chi. The quality of the front-end technique being performed reflects the quality of the back-end chi flow. Like for instance now, I'm performing some simple staff rotation intended to set up the very basic body geometry like sensing planes and axes. Repetitiveness behind these forms is intended to work within inside one's body. Unlikely dancing, where the movement is the expression itself, in qigong or martial arts, the motion is a way to achieve the flow of qi. That's why forms and form sets are always fixed, so that by doing them many times, we can focus on our inner nature, which naturally calms the mind down and improves physical body agility. Like Chinese proverb mentions, Thought drives chi, chi drives physical power, physical power results in motion. The practice itself works in a backward direction. We start doing some motions. We then feel our physical power. After, we relax and reach the chi level. And finally, all this unites within a single thought, guiding the entire process. This is the simplified view of how Chinese technology of enlightenment actually works. Next level is to move your body without involving an outer source of focus like staff or robe dar. Body movement forms become the source of focus themselves. Here I demonstrate single and double palm changes of Chen Stao Baguajan, followed by form linking them all up together known as Lian Huan. In case with weapons, your physical body is an observer and weapon is what it observes. With direct body movements, your psyche becomes an observer, and the body motion wrapped into forms is what your psyche is looking at. There is a principle known as stillness in motion. With this regards, body is what experiences the motion, while psyche is what should reflect the inner calm. This works vice versa as well. Doing physical forms for a long time makes psyche calm. Repetitive spiral movements set certain limits to the psyche so it cannot go mad like it usually does. This is the level of martial arts, where the core idea is not to defeat your opponent, but to defeat your very own weaknesses. These weaknesses reside in your psyche. The one who is focused at fighting own weaknesses is no longer interested in fighting other people, because winning someone else is just the matter of accumulating power good enough to defeat an opponent, while winning against your very own self is the matter of deep inner transformation. Depending on the level you are observing things at, like for instance while making exercises with a robe dart or a staff, or driving a car, or anything like that, you'd be associating yourself with a very physical body because there is no deeper experience available at the moment. While doing forms, like Taiji or Bagua, you discover something goes beyond the physical experience. Psyche gets involved. But this is not the limit. Next step is to simplify the outer form as much as possible and focus on the chi flow. This time your consciousness becomes an observer while your psyche is what is being observed. Chi is something that lives on a psyche level, something that can be sensed or detected by your psyche. Sometimes chi is as rapid as psyche itself, but I would say psyche reflects chi. Calm and steady psyche appears when your chi is stable and organized. Despite demonstrating the entire path, 
from external to internal exercises, this video is going to be focused at practicing at this exact level where the consciousness observes psyche. I will demonstrate some opening and closing Qigong exercises that perfectly fit not only Bhagavad practice, but any other internal martial art or Qigong, as well as some techniques intended to develop the inner flow of Qi, like self-massage, to activate 12 body meridians. Now I'm demonstrating the form that is known as Shogun. Shogun essentially consists of two parts. The first part is intended to clean up one's chi, uh, general cleansing exercise, I would say. While the second part is intended to gather chi into Danyan. I'm currently doing, I would say, a bit slower than I usually do it, just to make sure that you can see all the nitty gritty details behind the form. So, uh, unlike the previous exercises where body was used in order to generate the movement itself, here body only sort of contains the movement, body is not generating the movement, and chi uh, flows from within, entirely flows from within, so that I just uh, gather, take like new fresh chi, and push down the old dirty chi. My entire body, starting from legs, uh, gets filled with chi, so from bottom to top, and then from the top head to the very ground, I do push all the chi in my body downwards. So in this case, um, my body is just like a container, a container of chi, so it only serves as a container, and the focus is entirely dedicated to this internal flow. This is uh, the next level exactly where the calm consciousness, calm mind, may observe the flow of chi from within. Now, once uh, we are done with glancing exercises, the next step is to bring your chi back to Dantian, because when we do some movements, we sort of invoke our chi, and then we need to bring it back to Dantian to maintain the calm, to maintain the internal tightness, I would say. So now I'm doing like for the third or fourth time already. It might be enough to make just uh, once. So it depends. And finally, uh, just uh, hugging your belly. And this would allow you to maintain the chi inside. Here I demonstrate how the chi flows uh, along the meridians that are located in human arm. So uh, chi may flow only uh, via the meridians. Meridians are those internal um, wires, let's say, like current flows through the wires, although it's not really after the recent video on YouTube. But yeah, Let's assume that current flows within wires. Same with qi. So qi sort of flows within this meridians. And I'm just uh, demonstrating different ways how qi may uh, flow. Like in this case, for instance, this is stretching. So if I use muscles, I could only maintain movements forwards or backwards. But with tendons, I can do the movement to the both directions at the same time. Generally, heart center is where the chi flows to your hands. It starts from the lower dantian, the belly, and then it just goes to the heart, and then it widespreads to your hands in various directions. All the fingers on our hands are connected to various meridians. But essentially, if you try to imagine how chi flows within those meridians, this is not the way to go, definitely. You should rather explore the movement within your body and then you would realize how these meridians work. Currently, I'm demonstrating the Kai Ho exercise, opening, closing exercise with different uh, palm positions, but the idea remains the same. So essentially, this is not the matter of moving hands uh, outwards and inwards. This is the matter of uh, expanding and contracting your heart center. Once that is done, you will find out that your arms are connected to the heart center and you can move freely no matter which direction it is.
Same applies to legs. We also have meridians in our legs. And again, instead of just trying to imagine something in your head, this is not going to work. So mental activity is, is not the Qigong way. The Qigong way is just to make movements. Movements would involve Qi, and Qi will flow naturally. So you just move your body uh, within the certain forms. This will allow you to activate Qi. So here again, my legs are sort of containers, uh, and Qi is something that flows from within. This motion I'm doing up and down, like now I'm doing the motion down, so Qi flows downwards through the legs. So my hands are only helping Qi. Generally, with internal practices, uh, the matter of uh, making some external movements with your hands, for instance, they are intended not to be self-representative, but those helpers that allow your Qi to move a bit smoother than it does without helping yourself with your hands. So help your Qi with hands is generally uh, a good way to better sense Qi. Although this is not necessarily needed, you may move your Qi by just doing this uh, exercise. You don't necessarily need to involve your hands, but with hands it generally just works a bit better. And finally, uh, there is an exercise uh, intended to work out all the 12 meridians in the human body. And uh, the exercise itself is a self-massage, but before demonstrating the self-massage itself, I want to show you the trajectory of how qi flows within this particular exercise. And this is probably the most important bit in this entire video, because all the 12 meridians are being involved. So like uh, the central front meridian, and then going to legs, so essentially, it's quite important to understand that the way human body may move, generally, it depends on this internal architecture of how our meridians are essentially operating, where they are located. There are not that many movements that we can do with, with our human body, although the variety is really vast. But, but generally, uh, those types of moves uh, leave the styles, just the types of moves, not many uh, available, really. So, yeah. And this exercise is exactly intended to make sure you do feel the internal flow of chi within your body. But that was just a helper. And the real exercise is this one. So a self-massage, it starts with um, just hitting your dantian a little bit. And then this tiny hits are intended to... Uh, release the blocks that you might have in your muscles with your hands with your entire body so that she flows naturally so every little hit every little strike is intended to remove that kind of tension but again before i just showed you the trajectory the pure trajectory and this is the actual exercise the problem when people doing self-massage is usually they just to hear themselves uh, without particularly understanding what's uh, the reason of doing that. So why is that done? So that is done not just to hit yourself. That is done just to make uh, this flow being activated. And without doing the inner part, the flow itself, uh, beating yourself does not make sense. Just hurt yourself, that's it. So I'm just doing this uh, internal flow, chi, like being demonstrated in the previous exercise. But the traditional way of how this form is performed is by this little hits. You may do it uh, harder or softer, depending on the amount of tensions you have in your body. Since uh, I have quite a great sensitivity, I don't have to hit myself that hard. I feel the sense of chi, flow of chi anyway, so I can just do this light hits. This is Fairly enough for me. So quite interestingly, when doing this uh, types of exercises, your mind is completely focused on the internal flow of chi, and nothing can distract you because you are busy with maintaining this kind of flow. Exactly like we mentioned at the very beginning of this video. And finally, just bring the chi back to Dantian. And also release tension in the central from the resin, so that again your chi does not stuck in the chest but sinks down to Dantian. 